that me. If that's all right. There's a uh, rhyme that I read uh, that contains one of the most important lessons that any of us needs. This lesson comes from Dr. Seuss. Uh, it's about the Zoe who had to have a life's purpose and had to learn to take a risk with living that purpose for life. It goes like this. Did I ever tell you about the young Zode who came to two signs at the fork in the road? One said to place one, the other place two. So the Zode had to make up his mind what to do. Well, the Zode scratched his head, his chin, and his pants, and he said to himself, I'll be taking a chance. If I go to place one, now that place may be hot. How do I know if I like it or not? On the other hand, though, I'll be sort of a fool if I go to place two and find it too cool. In that case, I may catch a chill and turn blue. So maybe place one is the best, not place two. But then again, what if place one is too high? I may catch a terrible earache and die. So place two may be best. On the other hand, though, what might happen to me if place two is too low? I might get some very strange pain in my toe. So place one may be best, and he started to go. Then he stopped, and he said, on the other hand, though, on the other hand, other hand, other hand, though. And so for 36 hours and a half, that poor Zode made starts and stops at the fork in the road, saying, don't take a chance. No, you might not be right. And then he got an idea that was wonderfully bright. Play safe, said the Zode. I'll play safe. I'm no dunce. I'll simply start out for both places at once. And that's how the Zode, who would not take a chance, got to nowhere at all with a split in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> now with apologies to Dr. Seuss, <clears throat> let me talk about what that lesson means when it comes to the mission of the church. Oh, let me correct that. Let me talk about what it means to your mission and my mission, our mission, the mission certainly of the church, but we are the church. Remember the old, uh, this is the church, this is the steeple, <coughs> the doors and the old people, right? The church is the people. It's the inhabitant residence of the Lord Jesus Christ who lives in us and works through us to accomplish His will. So the mission of the church, and that's what we're focusing on here, is the mission of the church which is to reach the community right around us. God had some very definite plans for His church to be successful. Jeremiah said that God said, and very quite specifically, that His plans for us are good. Did you hear what El Sue read a moment ago? Let's read it together. For I know the plans I have together. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Who doesn't love the idea of a future and a hope? And that's God's plans for us. In addition, the great commission that Jesus gave to all of his disciples back just as he was about to ascend back to the Father. This great commission uh, gets a little bit more specific about the where and the how and the who and why of our mission and where we get the resources and the power to carry out our mission. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. That is our mission. Jesus said to his disciples, and by the way, we are his disciples too, are we not? He said to his disciples to go and make more disciples. To make disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, a person who knows nothing of Christ or has never made a commitment to Christ, that is the person to whom we are addressed. That is the person to whom our mission is focused. But he said more than that. He said, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In other words... Help them to make a commitment to Jesus Christ. And then he said, teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments that I've given you. So we are to go 
and win and baptize and teach. And then he said, here's where the power is going to come from. He said, be sure of this, I'm with you always, even to the end of the <coughs> The fact is, as we go about Jesus' mission, He is with us. He is in us. He is empowering us. Many places throughout the Scripture, we are told to do some things. We're told to feed people. We're told to clothe people. We are told to heal those who are victims of hunger and homelessness and sickness and abuse and all the ills that life can throw at us. Well, this is part of our mission. If you uh, grab the bulletin on the way in this morning, you will notice that a number of years ago, this church adopted as its mission statement the words that are underneath this picture on the bulletin. And I would like for us, it's, it's on the screen right now, but I'd like for us to read that out loud together as well, because this is the mission of Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church. Let's say it together. The mission of Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church is to serve God and our fellow man in a biblically-based manner to further the kingdom of Christ. Now, if I were to write a mission statement, I might write it a little bit differently. You may have started with something different than this and wound up after talking about it for however long that was. Or was it just given to you all, David? It was something that you studied and, and it evolved, and, and this is what the mission statement was agreed. And so, uh, it, Will you find this at all in the Bible? I can't give you chapter and verse. It doesn't read exactly like this. What is this then? This is a distillation. This is the uh, encapsulation of what Jesus was trying to, con uh, to uh, convey to his disciples then and still now of what we are supposed to be doing, the road that we are supposed to be traveling. Now, I don't want the service to <coughs> into Tuesday, and so I'm going to shorten a few parts of it here. This statement is the mandate you decided on. Now, granted, probably all of you were not here when this was decided on, but this is the statement of this church. This is part of the fabric of what this church is to be about. You agreed upon that at one point. There are three very compelling, very simple facts <coughs> that are here that we must admit. And I wonder if we could take a vote here this morning. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but a simple or very loud amen would do. Fact number one is this. Christ does call us to mission. Weekly but I'll tell you. Christ does call us to mission. Secondly, a church that does not focus on the mission that Christ calls them to is saying no to God. <coughs> the amen was almost non-existent that time. Why? We don't want to be convicting ourselves here, do we? Christ calls us to mission Secondly, a church that doesn't focus on the mission is saying no to God. Third, we don't want to be that church. Amen. See, that, that redeems everything, doesn't it? We don't want to be that church. And so, the sermon this morning is just, believe it or not, a simple sentence. It has two prongs. Like a fork may have three prongs. My sermon has one sentence, but really two prongs to it. And here it is. <coughs> Let's not be that church. Let's be the church that lives out our mission commitment. This is going to stay on the front of our bulletin because that's what we agreed to be. And when I became part of this church appointed by the bishop to be here as your pastor, I accepted that. I didn't know that that statement was in existence, but I accepted you, and so I accept your mission. I accept to throw in my lot with you. And if you're part of Pleasant Hill, or you'd like to become part of Pleasant Hill, this is what we're going to be about. This is what we're going to talk about. This is what we're going to try to do <coughs> with everything that we do. Does that mean, oh, we're not going to have any fun anymore? We're just going to work? No, 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 no. 
We're going to live out our commitment to Christ with this as a focus. That doesn't mean that we're not going to have fun and joy and pick at each other from time to time and, and do good things together. But it does mean that we want to be the church that lives out our commission. Toward that end, we're going to, uh, we're going to celebrate our covenant with a baptismal covenant renewal time. Uh, page number 50 and uh, following in your hymnal has that uh, covenant service in it. I'd like for you to turn to it. <coughs> Will you? 
and you say I do, you know, it's a lot easier to say I do than what? To live up to it, right? So, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, and by the way, I'm, uh, I'm not only speaking to you, I'm speaking to me. I'm going to answer just like you do. Since the earliest, uh, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? I do. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. Is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, with the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Water is special as a symbol. It is a symbol of life, it is a symbol of birth, it is a symbol of what God gives to us, the cleansing of our sins. I don't know if you're one of those people that raises your hand in church, but you're invited to do this. As, as I um, lead us through this Thanksgiving over the water, there are times when I'm going to have my hand raised. Uh, the hand is empty. There's nothing in it. I raise it up to God. It's a symbol that when we come to this water, when we come to do what we're doing today, uh, we come with open hearts, we come with open hands, because God always wants to fill both. He wants to fill our hands with things to do. He wants to fill our hearts with His Spirit, to drive and to empower us. And so we give thanksgiving over the water. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, for nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, tell us our each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. People. Pour out your Holy Spirit and by this gift of water call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins and you clothe us with righteousness through our lives that dying and rising with Christ we may share in his final victory. All oh, praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, and give you and the Holy Spirit This is not rebaptism. We're not rebaptizing ourselves here. Uh, this is a remembrance and a reaffirmation. We are affirming what once <coughs> we affirmed with our baptism that Christ is our Lord and we are His 
brothers and sisters. We are his fellow workers. We are Christ's uh, brothers and sisters, children of the Heavenly Father. And as we come, there are significant and appropriate ways to use this water. As I did, I reached in and I scooped up some of the water and let it fall, a symbol of how plentiful good water is for our life. Some people will come and they'll simply uh, put their hand over the water, perhaps like so, and just remember that God's Spirit brooded over the waters during creation. Some people will come and just observe as uh, mankind is forced to observe somehow the forces of nature, the forces that God has control over. Some people will actually touch the water for a moment just to reconnect. Some people will touch the water and make sign of the cross on their head. There is no right way other than a disrespectful way to use this water. As you come, whatever you need to do to be reminded of and led in recommitment to your baptismal vows of serving the Lord with your gifts, your worship, your service, and your witness. Uh, do that. Let God lead you in that. And so, the water is here. God's people are there. Let's bring the two together.
fell on the mountain. We go in the valleys. We go everywhere. We take this baptism seriously. We take our commitment seriously. We take our mission seriously. And so my prayer for you is this. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Let us all rejoice in the faithfulness of our covenant God. We give thanks for all that God has already given us as members of the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and in peace. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace.